Okay, so we'll do a brief uh, meditation, a brief uh, chanting, and then we'll begin. Oh, my moon Oh, my moon Oh, my moon Oh, my moon Makiru Mimba Nebajar Makiru Mimba Nebajar Makiru Mimba Nebajar Makiru Mimba Nebajar Okay, so <clears throat> we've uh, last week we completed metaphysical process one, uh, and I look back at uh, the uh, the first lecture, official lecture, we'll say that was done on the uh, um, Dua, it was nine years ago, as so it took us nine years <laughs> to complete metaphysical process one. Uh, and so it was a kind of a milestone. And so there was a lot that went into it. But uh, it's not going to take us, so hopefully it doesn't take us nine years to get to the metaphysical process too. But that's what we'll begin this evening. So metaphysical process two. Senu. <laughs> Mystic wisdom teaching of the mysteries of what dwells within the duat too. Mysteries of the processional boats of magic and the double fire. So recall in metaphysical process one that uh, we we encountered uh, a couple of boats. The emphasis was on the uh, the goddesses and the uh, the metaphysical practices regarding the goddesses, the uh, the transmutation practices, and so in metaphysical process too, there's going to be a uh, more of an emphasis uh, on the bulbs. So metaphysical process two emphasizes the use of the boat. And actually the boat is, uh, is a pronounced aspect of ancient Egyptian and theology. And so there are many boats. So the boat is a, a central feature. Uh, but here we're going to concentrate on obviously the boats of the Amdua in metaphysical process too. As you know, we are not calling these divisions. We're referring to them as metaphysical processes. As you have seen in metaphysical process one, uh, how these are, uh, these are actually systems of uh, spiritual integration of things that you do with the mind and with the feeling. The boat of the Amdua metaphysical process to illustrate certain metaphysical and psychophysiological processes 
that an aspirant is to develop and ingratiate. <clears throat> so this paragraph is essentially an introduction into metaphysical process too, and it's talking about what is to be uh, what is to be encountered. And here, certain metaphysical and psychophysiological. By psychophysiological, I mean things relating to the mind and the processes and actions that the mind produces in the body, in the mind, in the astral body, with the, the, uh, the life force energy and life force energy processes. And these processes are to be developed and ingratiate, meaning to be absorbed in your personality. So if you absorb these uh, practices or these metaphysical processes in your personality, you, you become an active, mechanism of the metaphysical process. In other words, the metaphysical process is operating through you. So you are like the uh, the, the operating system of a computer. So think about what that means when you are the, the operating system. And, and that ties you in with the uh, the duat region and the, uh, the the process, the the mystic process, and the, the dynamic process of the uh, of the um, dua, of what is within the dua. So you you are not essentially you are not separate from the dua. You you get plugged into it. The boat, therefore, is a metaphor for the psychological process of a certain type that is conducive to positive spiritual movement. So we'll talk more about that. But the, the point to understand is that the boat is a metaphor. So you're not going to be in an actual boat in the netherworld floating along. And th these are metaphors for systems of mind that are related to uh, positive spiritual movement. And by positive spiritual movement, I mean a spiritual movement in which the personality is, is advancing towards a spiritual enlightenment. The makeup and design of the prow and stern, meaning that the front and the back of the bow gives us an indication of the psycho-metaphysical process while inhabitants of the boat indicate the spiritual and or psychological disposition that is to be developed in the mind. So the makeup of the prow and the stern. So at the prow, you see how here you have a white crown at the prow. And at the stern, you have uh, a red crown. And so the makeup of the crown is telling the makeup of the, the, the prow and the stern is telling you what kind of psychophysiological processes uh, to develop. And the inhabitants, meaning the members in the boat, 
gives you an indication of the, this psychological disposition of your personality that is to be developed. So one gives you the, the process, the system process, and the other gives you the psychological disposition, essentially meaning the condition of mind. So the prow and the stern is process of mind and the inhabitants of the boat indicates condition of mind. So this is how to read these boats. And, and now you're getting insight into the system of the boat. So if you come here, if you visit uh, these areas, you're not going to just be looking at these images uh, and, and, and you're going to see something that others cannot see. You're going to see the mystery before you as opposed to a beautiful picture with these weird images of a, you know, a, 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 a four-legged animal with, with the head coming out of the back of the animal. To you, it should mean something else. It should give you, give you a different kind of, it should, you should be reading into the mystery of it. And then that's what you're learning now. Insight into the boat is a look deep within the psyche of a human being and the spiritual process unfoldment within the mind. So what the boat does, it gives us the, the mechanism and, and the pathway to study the, the mind of a human being the makeup of, and and by studying the mind of a human being you under, you gain insight into the the troubles and the uh the troubles the problems that generate uh, abnormal behavior or normal behavior by normal behavior i mean behavior that is that is uh acceptable to society, uh, but, may not, but may not be acceptable to spiritual evolution. It's normal, but it's not, it's not uh, mystical. It's not insightful. It's not mythological. And so the boat gives you the, the insight into the workings of the human mind. Keep in mind, uh, when we're studying these systems, we're, we're not studying uh, uh, mental and psychological disease. Uh, we're studying the, the makeup system of the, the human mind. So if the, the human mind is not the mind of an animal, it is not the mind of a dog or a cat or a bird or a flea, those, the, and those are limited as far as the, the, the construct of mind, the mind of, a, of an animal is limited because there, there isn't a, a well-developed intellect that, uh, that that can lead the the, the sentient being uh, to deep introspection and lead uh, the the sentient being to approach profound questions. And of course, there isn't the capacity to perform a serious meditation practices and and metaphysical exercises. So the boats gives us a, a look into a mind capable of, of, and when I say a mind capable, I mean a mind that is not beset by uh, worry, anxiety, frustrations, 
depression, um, narcissism, uh, any psycho deep psychological problem. So a person who has deep psychological problems, this system of metaphysics is not suited for them. They have to become normal. And so this, the, the when we're looking at the boats and the systems of the boat, we're looking at the mind from a perspective of normalization. A mind that, that is that is primed and ready to take on serious uh, metaphysical processes. Because when you get into the uh, to metaphysical process one, and you're talking about the uh, the the uh, working with the goddesses, and uh, those are serious serious practices. Uh, the the uh, the the uh, those uh, assimilation practices. And and now when you're working with the the bullets, these are advancements on those practices. To give you an idea, we go back to metaphysical process one. There's a certain one I'm looking for. Yes, the psychic fusion practices where you're fusing uh, the goddesses into each other and then, you know, with the serpents and then the baboons. These are at advanced practices. These are practices that are not to be done by people who have uh, psychological issues. So you, 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 uh, you can't be sharing these practices with people who have not done the prerequisite purification and readying of the mind for, for these, for, for handling these intense visualizations and mystic integration practices, such as the, the psychic fusion system. Now, after these system of practices are performed and a person has reached a certain state of proficiency, now you're looking to advance on these practices. And by advance, I mean extend them and, and add on to them. Then you're looking at metaphysical process too. And you're looking at the boats, the boat systems. So it's an advancement. So when you're doing or getting into metaphysical process two practices, Again, these are not practices uh, for people who have not gone through at least some preliminary work in metaphysical process one. And if you have to be normalized to do metaphysical process one practices, then you certainly have to be uh, normalized you know, not only normalized to do metaphysical process two practices, you have to be normalized and your mind have to already have developed a certain state of metaphysical conditioning based upon the practices that were performed in metaphysical process one. So you're not coming here fresh. You're coming here with practice systems already incurred by the mind. And therefore the, the mind now is ready to look at, at the bolts 
and to integrate the both systems into your practices. And so when it says here, insight into the boat is a look deep within the psyche of a human being. It means the psyche of a human being that is prepared to do and to perform certain mystical practices. Thus the human body and its demeanor and change in attitude of an aspirant reflects a deeper psychological process that has taken place. And what I mean by this sentence is that through these practices and their effects, what happens is that you change. Something is going to happen to you that is not uh, occurring at the moment. So your human, the, the human constitution will change. Your body will become more um, expressive of gentleness and, and calmness. And you'll have more of a calm demeanor. And your 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 attitude, you know, you, you won't have the uh, the an attitudinal issue uh, from the perspective of uh, of intense egoism. You may have an attitudinal issue related to your development uh, within the spiritual program. And what I mean by that is that, saying that a lot tonight, what I mean by that, what I mean by that is that you can, you can be doing your practices and uh, you think you're all good, but then you experience anger or you, 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 uh, experience a fit of jealousy, uh, something like that. And so those attitudinal issues, uh, you'll be working through them in your integrative meditative practices. And so you, you and by doing that, you diminish, diminish, diminish their, their power, but you're not coming in as an egoistic person. You're not an egoist. You, you don't have an egoistic a perspective of life. By the time you reach here, your, your ego should be well tamed. It should, it should be well, uh, it should be purified, but it, it should be well tamed. You can't, you're, you're not a voice, you're more introverted. You're not a boisterous, egoistic, angry, worldly personality. Uh, if you're that at this point, it means that you have failed in metaphysical process one. Uh, and and, uh, and and you cannot get through metaphysical process one and remain an egoist. It, it, will, it will not be possible. So by the time you get here, you should be, your mind has to be in a, in a certain condition, a certain place a certain reflective disposition, certain reflective attitude, as opposed to an egoistic, extroverted, loud, boisterous. So you should have already come into some coolness and some calmness of your personality. And, and uh, you, you don't have to be hanging out, going out. Your diet is already, you know, you're not, you know, you're not a meat eater, you're at least a vegetarian, if not a vegan at this point. Because when you start working with these, even in the psychic fusion, when you start working with these psychological forces and visualizations, you're going to enhance the, the life force and these energies are going to be moving through your body. So your body have to be prepared for it. That was said, uh, previously in, in months ago that in your metaphysical practice one practices, you already have to have already been a vegetarian at least before entering those practices. So by the time you get here, you're well seated in your, in, in your diet, your proper diet. You're already taking your, your sit, your, uh, 
supplements uh, and a good uh, combination of supplements for your body being able to handle higher forces is uh, L-citrulline and quercetin. Uh, so you can take L-citrulline supplements and quercetin supplements and those enhance and boost your immune system, but they also have a positive effect on your cardiovascular system. And so you, you need uh, you need to develop your cardiovascular system and make it strong, uh, so that your 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 conduit system, oh, is able to handle the the psychic forces as they start to flow through your body when you're doing certain meditation practices. And concentration exercises. The book, therefore, gives us insight into those psychological transmutation phenomena that has taken place in the mind. The book is a mirror reflection of the spiritual movement, as well as a guide to, to direct the mind towards a positive spiritual outcome spiritual enlightenment. See here, this is what was uh, being explained that the, the, the boat gives us uh, insight into the transmutation process that takes place within the mind. as the meaning the boat reflects uh, diagrammatically and uh, from a pictorial perspective, you know, a symbolic perspective of what is actually occurring in the mind through the practice. So the study of the boat gives insight into what is occurring within the mind. In other words, when the, the sages were designing these boats and putting them together, they were putting them together on the basis of information gain of what occurs in the mind through certain uh, mystic systems or metaphysical systems of practice. So they, they, they weren't just put together randomly. Is that every feature of the bow means something that is occurring with the psycho-spiritually. So the boat is like a, a guidebook into the human mind. but a human mind that is on a path to spiritual enlightenment. You follow the boat reflects what is occurring in the mind. Does anyone have any questions about that? So the boat is a, a kind of a, a mirror that you're holding up to the mind. And what whatever occurs in the mind through a certain system of exercises is reflected in the boat. And it's reflecting a mind that is moving towards uh, spiritual enlightenment. Therefore, the boats are images of mind that reflects the process of spiritual enlightenment. So by studying the boats, you're studying the mental and the psychological 
and the uh, the the mental, the psychological, and the 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 effects of the practices in the mind that is reflective of a of a, a, a I don't want to use the word consciousness because it gives a kind of different connotation. It's reflective of a mind that is expanding towards enlightenment. So it's a study of mind that is achieving enlightenment. We will now look at the bolts and their principles to begin our examination of metaphysical process too. Hold one moment, please. So, since we are here, let's do this. Let's come out of the book for a moment. <clears throat> and let's go to Just to give you an idea of where we are. In the system makeup. So again, we're in the, uh, the tomb of Seti. So if we turn around, this is a doorway into the, uh, what I refer to as a tomb, the metaphysical device. And what you see on the wall here is the litany of Ra. So we'll go down. And here you have metaphysical process four, which is the, the subject of, of volume two. And you'll actually see these images in volume two if you don't have it already. And here you have Metaphysical process five from this side. Down.
And here you have the uh, the Book of Gates, which is in the same genre. And it's something I haven't, I've looked at it, but I haven't really started translating it yet. Although I've translated uh, a small portion of it, the Book of Gates. I'll probably look at it next year more in depth. Oops. Let's go down the stairs. Okay, so we are in what is referred to as the burial chamber. And over here, go closer. Oh, I clicked on the wrong uh, button. But in any way, here's Metaphysical Process 6, which is in uh, Volume 2. So let's come out of here. So I guess we have to go here. Oh, here's metaphysical process one. in the burial chamber. These sarcophagus would be, this is an, an entrance there. The, the, uh, the whole device hasn't been completed. Where this railing is, what they're doing is they're cordoning off this area where you can go down like in a deeper, like in a tunnel, but you can't, but there's not much in there as far as glyphs or anything on a wall because it's unfinished. So right before that, meaning right above it here is metaphysical process two. So let's go here, we get a better look. Metaphysical process too. And you can see you have three registers. You have three sections. And the bolts are in the middle section. Here. Here's metaphysical process one on this wall, metaphysical process two on this wall. So you can see how they laid out the uh, the text and the, uh, the diagrams, the iconography in the same uh, area of the device.
and on the ceiling they put they put a uh, the book of Dan the uh, book of day and night with astrological implications. So when you're when you're done practicing here, standing in front of this wall and doing these practices, then you move to this area, stand in front of this wall, you study the text, and you perform these practices here. And this is the boat we're looking at in the book. This one, I don't wanna give a descriptor of it yet until we get to it in the book. You can see the water, the boats are on the water. This line is the water. And it basically represents the, uh, the unformed aspect of mind. And the boat traveling over the water is a manifestation of the movement of that water. So in other words, uh, the movement of the boat creates its own image in the water, which is essentially the mind. So it's the, the mind is like a mirror that is when you have a thought in your mind, it's like you are looking at a mirror that is reflecting off of the surface of your own mind. And that is your thought. Whatever, if that thought is good or bad or positive or negative, it's a reflection off of the, the energy surface of your mind. And therefore, a, an image in your mind is only an appearance. There's not an absolute reality. It is kind of a, 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 a projection. And because you are aware of your mind at that time, meaning aware, not with a, uh, because you are at a, a, when you're noticing what's in your mind, because noticing what in your mind and being aware of what is in your mind are not the same thing. So when, you notice what's in your mind. What you're noticing is a reflection of, of what is being reflected off the mirror image of your mind, the, the mirror surface of your mind. And that's appearing as an image that you are now noticing. And so that's what these boats are. So when you do these certain practices in metaphysical process one, then it becomes possible for your mind to reflect these images and systems because the mind has been cleared of the impediments that will prevent the reflection of these images. So these are higher images. And if you are if you have a dream and you dream of these boats, or if you have a thought and the thought of these boats come up, that's a higher thought, that's an advanced thought. And that's a, a thought that's, that's more advanced than thinking about what you have to do tomorrow, what bill you have to pay, or daydreaming about your, your lover or, or whatever. 
these are 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 metaphysical thoughts that, that's re related to the mystic movement of the personality. So the, these are higher thoughts and, and therefore they're higher images that's reflecting off the surface of the mind. So we're gonna go back to the book now. So it's the same same boat we're looking at. Same. This is just a picture of of it from the metaphysical device of Seti the first, showing the layout of the three tiered arrangement with the spiritual process boats in the middle register, and that's what we just showed. So the boats are in the middle register. And here, from metaphysical device of Ramses the fifth and sixth, showing the layout of the text with the spiritual process both arranged in sequential order from right to left. So the, the boats are in sequence. And you can see, firstly, the texts are above all above the images. And sometimes the text comes in between the images. And the texts in between the divinities relate directly to the div divinities. The text above the divinities is the, the, the spiritual narrative of the process and the, 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 the mythic and mystic a narrative. And if we move to the, the middle register, what we see are the, the boats in sequential order. So in other words, the boats are to be studied and practiced from right to left. The text concerning the spiritual process boats of metaphysical process two. So this text is relating to these boats. Pa ar en er mejat ben eni en nik fm au au deputa. So we'll skip the translation and we'll go directly to the philosophical premise. The great go through and ascend to the opening of this domain through rowing with the spiritual strength derived from exalting the mystic boats. The rowing is the mystery process that is done through giving exaltations and praises to the boats of this exalted land. Devotion joined with mysticism. Am NZ Al Niu Zenu Ari F Hept Keru Er Seketet and Hemt Meru. Devotion joined with mysticism within this exalted land. This process of exaltations and worship towards the principles of the boats causes a metaphysical process of advancement through the mystic field. This is done through employing the skills 
of the words of power. So the great go through and ascend to the uh, the opening of this domain through rowing. Henny means to row. So the rowing is a uh, a metaphor of a mystic process that is taking place within the mind. In other words. They're using the movement of a bow of the bow as a metaphor for your spiritual movement. And you are in the boat and you are rowing the boat. And how you row the boat is by your worship towards the divinity, the, the, your worship towards the boat and your worship towards the divinities in the world. When you enter into a worship of the boats, so the boats are essentially divinities. And when you worship the boat, you are worship certain, you're worshiping certain cosmic forces of the unconscious, of the psyche. And by worshiping the bowls, you're activating a specific metaphysical process that is related to the bolt. This is very important to understand that when you are visualizing or concentrating on or chanting the name of the bolt, what you're doing is that you are turning on, you're activating a certain psychological dormant process. So something that is not operating, you are turning on the operation of that thing that is has been previously not operating, previously dormant. So you're turning a key, you're turning something on, you're activating a process in the mind. And that's why these, these teachings are, are secrets. That's why they're mysteries. Because you're doing something with the mind. The initiate is doing something with the mind that other people are not prepared for, they can't do. So they, whatever those processes are, within the minds of normal people, they remain inactive. They remain locked down. They remain shut. But when the spiritual initiate starts to enact the worship of these boats, of these psychological, these cosmic and psychological forces, you are activating a certain process of mind. You're turning something on, you're, you're causing something to be activated. And therefore the metaphor of rowing, you are moving the waters of the mind in a certain way. You're causing the boat to move forward. And, th and that equates to, to a flowing of the energy of the mind and an expansion of the mind. So we'll continue with this uh, fascinating and profound teaching uh, next week. Are there any questions before we sign off? Uja. Uja. I don't have a question, but I have Uh, the teaching, this teaching makes me think of, and I can't say it makes me think of, but what's coming to mind, and it's no, <clears throat> I guess, surf, no um, real relevant correlation, but to comedic studies, but 
Do you remember the nursery rhyme, roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream? Something, something life is but a dream. Mm -hmm. The fact that <clears throat> you're saying that rowing the boat and what is in your mind is being reflected as the mirror image, it would give the impression as if something like that could be taken. Like, I don't know the, the history of that nursery rhyme usually it's you know nothing good with those nursery rhymes but it just seems um very um I don't know reminiscent to me in some way because I could remember thinking <laughs> when I was a child what do they mean life is but a dream because I know most children you know we don't relate to the words in the nursery rhymes logically we just mm -hmm. go along singing it. Mm -hmm. But I could remember questioning that. So something about what you're saying now is reminiscent of that to me. Just sharing. Like I said, there's no real correlation. Right. And I can see where you're coming from. Uh, there's only one issue with it. And it's an important issue. It's an important designation to make that you have three states. You have the, the awake state, the, the sleep with dream state, and the dreamless sleep state. And these practices are, if done properly, they're being done outside of any states of dream. Um, but uh, if you do them, you might dream about them. But the dreaming about them is an effect, it's not the practice, it's not the, uh, and you're not really getting the effect from the dream. So when you're doing these practices, you sit down and you do these practices in your meditation states, you have to make sure that you're not sleeping. Your, your mind has to be awake and you have to be absorbed in the subconscious. Uh, and in the subconscious, in a, in a, in the in an in the uh, a consciously aware mode of mind. So you're in the subconscious, and you're aware you're in the subconscious, uh, and you are not in dream at all whatsoever. Uh, and then you you are enacting the, the practices in that in that kind of state. And that's where you get the profound positive effects. And then you may dream about that, but the dreaming of it is a positive dream. It's a nice dream, but that's not the, the practice. That's not the uh where that's not where you want the metaphysics of the practice to be worked out. You, you don't want it to be worked out in dream. You want it to be worked out in the subconscious in an awake awareness state in the subconscious. But it's important. Asama, you wanted to say something? Asama, you, you put here Dua Hatat. Hi, John. I was just acknowledging uh, the comment, um, you know, communication. Very never. Yep. Okay, do I have a Uja. Uja. Could it be that that, that nursery rhyme is more... Um, being in that metaphysical process that allows you to realize that life, the phenomenology, you know, life is not real. It's an illusion. And what you're experiencing as you go through on, on the boat, that is a reality. Could it be interpreted in that way? I would say yes. If you're if you're relating to the rowing of the boat as the reality, 
and the extraneous appearances as the dream, then the nursery rhyme would work in that context, yes. And keeping in mind that the 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 what is giving the the quality of reality of the boats in the subconscious is that you have an awake awareness uh, perception of them, but that perception is also illusory. It's illusory, but not dream, not a dream illusion. It's it's a mental psychological illusion, apart from the dream state. So the dream state is also illusory, but is is coupled with delusion and are you and all, all kinds of of stuff uh, of the subconscious that it, that is coming from the 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 unconscious. Whereas when you're working out these these systems, you're working with a higher, it's an, also an illusion, but you're working with a higher illusion. But, but you're coming closer to a realization of your transcendental self, though. Right, because only the transcendental self is the absolute reality. And, and so that's what gives the, the metaphysical exercises their potency, that you're working with them outside of the, the, the dream state. So you're working with them in a state where it's illusory, but it's an illusion, it's an illusion that's reflective of a higher mystical reality. And that's, that's so that's what gives those practices their potency. Okay, anything else? Okay, so we'll close out. Sitting with your back straight, shoulders over your hips. Allowing your mind and body to relax. Breathe in deeply and rhythmically. Allowing the mind and body to relax. Makiru Emba Nebajer Makiru Emba Nebajer Makiru Emba Nebajer Makiru Emba Nebajur Om Hita Pata 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 Do everyone Hita Do a 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 Hita Oh, I think.